my kids love riding around the backyard on little electric dirt bikes. And the electric is great because then the neighbors don't complain and they're usually a little less powerful and so they're not really ripping up the grass that much. Uh, but then the downside of them is they're really not that powerful. Uh, beyond that also, the range on them isn't amazing. And so the few times that I've tried to take out my kids to somewhere like an actual trail, uh, it really didn't get too far before it ran out of batteries. And so that's why um, I saw one of these pop up on um, Facebook Marketplace and decided I needed to pick it up. One of the big reasons why I really wanted this bike specifically is the battery pack was shot. And so I was able to get a really good deal on it uh, knowing that the batteries were bad. Not only is there a nice cool panel here, but if you take it off, it has a really nice accessible battery pack area. So this is gonna be great because the idea is we are gonna put in some hot swappable batteries uh, so we want some really nice easy access. So when it came to batteries, I decided to go with the Milwaukee M18. Uh, the reason for that is there's a lot of aftermarket support for these, um, a lot of third party batteries. This is actually what this is, a third party. And, um, and then also these. These little adapters make it super easy. You uh, slide in the battery, it clicks right in place and you get your power right here. So this makes the whole project quite a bit easier. So the Monster Moto E1000 is a 36 volt system. So I could get away with two of these adapters. Uh, I decided to go for four. Uh, if you go with two, you just kind of run them both in series and you'll be able to bump it up because this is an 18 volt battery. Bump it up two batteries in a row would be 36 volts. Uh, I am gonna do in parallel and series. That way I can run four batteries. I can get a little bit longer life out of them. Um, it is gonna be set up in a way that you, you technically could run on two batteries. I was doing a little bit of testing with these batteries and it, and it just seems like four would be better uh, just when, it, when I was riding around a, an adult. Um, when I was really pinning it, it started to lose some power. So I think that it would benefit from having um, parallel and series batteries in order to get that full amperage. These adapters are pretty cool. You can disassemble them, um, which is really nice because that gives you some mounting options. It even looks like it was potentially made to be able to use three screws to be able to mount it to whatever you wanted to. On top of it too, um, you'll notice that you have the, your leads on there. It comes with some 12 gauge wire, which is good if we were gonna commit to using four batteries every time, but I can see many occasions that we might only use two, so technically we need 10 gauge wire on that. So we'll go ahead and solder that all up. Okay, now it's solder time. That's We got this all disassembled. I'm not a great solderer, so please don't make fun of me too much. So you see we have one side done. I've upgraded the wires to 10 gauge wires. I've also put them in series so that that way between these two wires we will get the full 36 volts. Okay, so we completed both sides here. They're both all ready to go. Uh, we only had one hang up, which is right here when the posts broke off on the plastic. I mean, it is just plastic after all. So I put some super glue on there. Um, we'll wait for that to dry. And just for good measure, I'm gonna fill it all in with hot glue. Um, not really required, but it's just gonna make it a nicer packaging and make sure it's gonna stay secure. Okay, they've all been soldered up. I put some hot glue in it. They're all closed up. And then I went ahead and soldered these together too. So you can see, 
you know, this, the green wires show where we're putting them in series and then um, the red wires and black wires are, are connecting up to make it parallel as well. Possibly not the best way to do this, but I've decided to hot glue them in place. Uh, part of that is just that I don't know how permanent this is going to be um, in this configuration, things like that. And then the other part is I'd love to bolt it in place, but uh, there's just not that much access. And so I don't really feel like taking everything apart for this. I kind of test fitted all the batteries. I only have two batteries right now. Other two are in the mail, and uh, sure enough, they all fit. I uh, I went ahead and soldered the connections. I really want to do a, a quick disconnect, but I don't have any on hand right now. Uh, but you can tell. So here's uh, space for two batteries, and here's space for two others. Obviously, if you do something like that, that's only going to give you uh, 18 volts, which will not power it up. Which you can tell, it didn't like that. But, you go ahead, put them like you're supposed to. There we go. Full power. I don't want to forget to mention also that I went ahead and got a four port charger for these batteries. Um, in theory, you could be running four and charging four all at the same time. And uh, I don't know what the charge rate is just yet, but um, hopefully it works out pretty well. Okay, now that we have all four batteries in here, the last thing to do is to put the cover back on. So one thing that I did was I got these cool little thumb screws instead of trying to use a regular um, screwdriver. So this will allow you to hot swap the batteries on the trail. And of course, the most important part is the final test. As you can see, it was a great success. The bike ran wonderfully and actually lasted longer than we could have expected. So we did get four batteries in there. Uh, I got my other two batteries in the mail, which two of them are actual Milwaukee brand batteries and then the other two are generics. That's gonna be a future video where I compare the longevity of the generic brand versus Milwaukee, kind of see if it's a good value, um, one versus the other. And um, another thing that happened, less fortunate, was the bike actually broke. The kids crashed it and they broke this uh, throttle control portion. And the downside to it is this part's not readily available. I could only find it one site and it was back ordered and the shipping costs were pretty high. So what I decided to do is order um, three separate parts. So this is actually, it's a throttle controller. It's also the on off switch and then the charge indicator. So I'm actually gonna split that out to be three separate parts. I am gonna get a generic throttle controller, a generic on off switch that you could use for any dirt bike. And then I'm gonna do um, a voltage meter that's gonna display a little more accurately instead of low, medium, high. It'll actually give you the voltage of the battery pack at that moment. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So that'll be our next video and so you can look forward to that.